In this lecture, we will understand and create a DB context class. In ASP.NET Core, a DB context class is a class that represents a session with a database and provides a set of APIs for performing database operations. This is part of the Entity Framework Core packages. The DB context class is responsible for maintaining a connection to the database, tracking changes to data, and performing database operations such as squaring, inserting, updating, and deleting. It also provides a way to define the database schema using entity classes or domain classes that we just built, which maps directly to database tables. So we can say that the DB context class is a bridge between your domain model classes and the database. DB context class is the primary class that is responsible for interacting with the database and performing CRUD operations on our database tables. In the image, you can see that whenever a call comes to a controller, in order to get or retrieve a data, the controller will have to talk to the DB context and it is the responsibility of the DB context to get the data from the database and provide it back to the controller. So now that we know what the role of DB context is, let's come back to our application and create a new DB context. I will first create a folder for the DB context. So right click on the project, go to add and click on new folder. I will call this data. And in this data folder, I will create a new class file. So right click on data, add a new class. And I will call this class the nzvoxdbcontext DB context so that I know that any data related to nzvox, I can retrieve it through this DB context. So I will call this the nzvoxdbcontext.cs. DB context dot CS. Click on the add button and it gives us the class file. Now this class inherits from the DB context class, which is part of the entity framework core packages. So inherit from the DB context class, press control dot and import this using statement, which is the Microsoft entity framework core package that we just installed. So make sure you have the using statement Microsoft dot entity framework core. So now that we have that, let's create a constructor for this class. So to create a constructor, you can use the shortcut CTOR and press double tab. In here, we want to pass the DB options because we later on want to send our own connections through the program.cs file. So I will use DB context options and give it a name so you can say db context options and we will then pass this to the base class so pass the db context options to the base class we will see the usage of this constructor later on when we create a new connection string and then inject the connection through the program.cs file. But for now, we have the constructor for this nzbox db context. After the constructor, we want to create db sets. A db set is a property of db context class that represents a collection of entities in the database. In our application, we have three entities or domain models, and they are difficulty, region, and the most important, walk. So we want to represent the DB sets of each of these entities as a collection in our database, and we will do that inside the DB context. So we will create properties for each one of them. So I will create the first property using the shortcut PROP double tab and then create a property of type db set and db set takes a property and the first collection would be for the difficulty and this comes from domain model so let's bring the using statement and now we have to give a name to this collection so you can call this difficulties Similar to this DB property, we now want to create two other properties, which will be one for the region. So a DB set type 
of region and we can call this the regions property and this will signify the regions collection inside a table and finally we have the third property which is db set of type walk and we will call this the walks property so we have three properties three db set properties inside the db context class and all of these properties represents collection inside our database we don't have a database yet but when we run entity framework core migrations in the next few lectures these three properties will create tables inside this new database now that we have created all the db set properties that represents our domain it is now time to come back in the next lecture and create a connection to the database.